USA would like to introduce you to our take on affordable stabilization. While analog stabilizing devices are generally required to have a similar architecture, what we wanted to do with the autopilot was create a simple design that could be made accessible to all levels of filmmaker. We also wanted it to be a piece of equipment that could stand up to rigorous use, and because we back it with a lifetime warranty, it had to be engineered to last. We used thick aluminum parts and a wrinkle powder coating on surfaces that will see the most wear and tear. The lower extending shaft is a solid aluminum bar to act as a partial counterweight. The handle is also a solid bar with a 3 8 by 16 thread so it can be mounted to various other attachments. And because handheld stabilizers must be properly counterbalanced, a great feature is that the weights are slotted and can be set in various positions rather than on a fixed track. They can even be angled to more easily offset weight at the top. So if you don't have the budget to spend on a motorized gimbal stabilizer, you can still get smooth shots at a fraction of the cost thanks to the autopilot. The autopilot arrives exactly as shown here. It has four plate weights on each side. Each plate weighs a quarter of a pound, so there's two pounds of total counterweight. There's a telescopic column, bearing gimbal, and camera mounting platform. For this demonstration, we'll be mounting the Nikon D5200. It weighs two pounds and two ounces, so we're only going to need one plate on each side. You'll want to consult the camera weight chart to see exactly how much weight you'll need to start with to begin balancing the stabilizer. So I'm going to remove three plates from each side, remove the retaining knobs, and then put the knobs back on to secure each plate weight. Now we're ready to mount the camera. What's great about this design is that you don't have to remove the camera plate in order to mount the camera. Just loosen the four retaining knobs, slide the platform back, remove the retaining nut from the camera screw, and then we'll secure the camera using the camera mounting screw. Visually line it up close to what appears to be the center of gravity, then tighten the fasteners on the sides. So now that we have the camera mounted, we want to balance the forwards and backwards plane. For this demonstration, we have it mounted to a light stand, but you can also do this on a table or other flat surface. When I let go of the counterweight platform, you can see that the stabilizer is tilting to the rear so the camera is back heavy. We want to move the weight forward to counteract that. To do that, we're going to loosen the camera plate, slide it forward gently. Now it's a little front heavy. So we just want to fine tune it by nudging the platform until we find that sweet spot. I'm just making adjustments by about a sixteenth of an inch every time. Just a little more. And that looks pretty close, so I'll lock it off right there. So now we're going to balance out the left and right plane. From this view, you can see clearly that we're a bit side heavy. There's a handle grip with battery and memory card, so it's a bit weighted on the right side. So what we want to do is balance that out. Release the four fasteners on the bottom, and the camera plate can now slide sideways. We'll pull it toward me just a hair, about a sixteenth of an inch and you can see that it's still a little side heavy, so we'll try again. Continue to move the platform in small increments. Getting close. That looks good about right there. So we'll tighten the bottom fasteners to lock the plate. And move on to the next step. So once we've balanced out the forwards, backwards, and left right planes, we need to determine if we have enough or not enough counterweight. To do that, we'll perform a test. Raise the stabilizer's counterweight platform horizontal, 
and then we'll drop it. And what we're trying to achieve here is about a two second to vertical drop time. So when I release it, it actually doesn't drop down, it raises up. Now we know that the camera is uh, too heavy. To fix that, all we need to do is loosen the extending column and lower the counterweight platform. That gives us, in effect, a heavier counterweight. Now we'll try the test again. Raise to horizontal and drop. And now you can see that the counterweight force is actually too great, so we want to decrease the length some. Now at the same time, we want to be sure that the counterweight platform stays in line with the lens, because when you loosen the knob, the counterweight platform is able to swivel side to side. And now we'll perform the test again, aiming for that full two seconds to vertical. And that's perfect, exactly what we want. Now if you've performed all of the leveling tests, but you still find that it's a little too forward heavy or side heavy, you can make fine adjustments using the counterweight platform rather than the camera platform, which is a good bit easier. Let's say for example it's a little forward heavy as it is now. We can bring back the front plate, and you can see how it now becomes a little rear heavy. So we'll just push that plate forward a little bit more, and that will bring it back into alignment. Suppose it's a side-to-side -side issue. For example, now it's leaning a little this way. We can actually take the plate weights and angle them in the opposite direction of the lean, and that will counter the force leveling it out. Once you've made all of the adjustments and you're perfectly, perfectly balanced, you'll be able to get those really smooth side-to-side -side motions like this, with the column remaining vertical. And during operation, you want to make sure that you always keep a light touch controlling the center column to direct the camera lens. Not a grasp, just a very light touch so that it doesn't spin out of control. You want to gently guide the lens as you move. Just a very light touch to tilt down, up, and pan left and right. Gently guide the column along while you move, and not overly force or control it. We have a few different cameras set up here, so you can see the various configurations. To the left side, we have a Canon XL1S that comes in just under 6 pounds, which requires all four plate weights on each side, and the telescopic column is extended about 6 inches. Next, we have the Nikon D5200, which is about 2 pounds and 2 ounces, requiring one plate on each side, and the column only extended by 2 inches. Following that, we have the Canon Rebel T3i that comes in at about a pound and a half, so we actually don't need any plate weights, and the column is extended almost fully about 9 inches. And finally, we have a very lightweight GoPro, so we added a quick release plate under that to bring the total weight up to 1 pound. That required no plate weights, and the telescopic column is extended only about 4 inches. If you've got something like a D600 or a Canon 5D2, you'll need about 2 plate weights on each side as both of those cameras will come in at a little over 3 pounds with lens. When viewed from the side, you'll notice that each camera's center of gravity is nearly aligned with the center column. This makes balancing much easier, and this is why we're able to use equal amounts of weight on each side of the base. When it comes to stabilization, weight can be our friend. The motion is more easily absorbed by the heavier load, so don't be afraid to load down that DSLR. When operating, lightly grasp the main column to direct the focus of the camera. Be sure not to grip the column tightly as this can translate into jerky motion on camera. You simply need to gently guide the column along while you move, and not overly force to control it. Practice tracking a moving subject, such as a walking person, but be sure to be aware of your immediate surroundings and don't get lost in the camera. Using a wide lens will help produce better motion shots. Consider that GoPros use a 14mm to 28mm equivalent focal length. This wide field of view really helps reduce the effect of motion on the viewer. 
The same concept applies even to stabilized motion, whether it be produced by a camera crane or an operator of a stabilizer like the autopilot. Using a wide lens helps to remove the perception of movement because what the viewer is focusing on moves less distance in relation to the screen. Also, be aware of your depth of field and make sure it's not too shallow as you move through your shooting environment. Finally, you can polish your shots using properly applied stabilization effects in editing software. Here are some clips using wide lenses without post-stabilization effects, and to the side is the same shot with the effect applied. It's very subtle, but a nice way to enhance the final product. But it's very important not to go overboard with the settings to prevent the effect from becoming too obvious to the viewer, in other words, the jello filter. Just like color correction, it's a matter of finely tuning the adjustments to get the right amount of effect. If possible, it's recommended that you shoot in a higher resolution than your output to compensate for any scaling made by your effect software. If you're shooting with a DSLR, you may also want to adjust for rolling shutter on fast moving clips. We hope these tips have been helpful, but practice is sometimes the best teacher, so enjoy your shots.